this video is going to cover setting up journeys within your CRM. The customer journey is the path that your contacts take when engaging with your company from initial awareness to purchase and beyond. The journey path you lead them on defines their experience. However, not every customer takes the same journey, which is why you must use both data and behavior to guide each lead down one path or another. When building your journey, the different options you have include decisions, which creates the logic that customizes the contact's experience in your campaign. Delays are waiting a certain amount of time before doing the next step. Actions is where you can send an email, activate a workflow, or move contacts in or out of groups. And then stopping the journey is important as it identifies when someone has completed the journey or path that they are on. To get started building your journeys, hover over automation and select journeys. Here is where you'll build and store all the journeys within your account. Along the right side of this page is where you can start a new journey, delete a journey, or load a journey that's stored within your CRM. Journeys are housed within folders in your account, and you can simply click on any of the journeys to load them into your page. On the top right is where you can import journeys. Along the left is where you have all the options associated with your journey, starting with the decision. A decision is a yes or no question that you ask. For example, if the contact has read or clicked an email, responded to a website form, or done any action within your account. You can also track the opportunity status if they're in a specific path or phase of your opportunities. You can do the status, which is randomly true, bounced contacts, unsubscribes, or a member of a specific group. Then you also have standard fields within their CRM record, as well as any custom user-defined fields that they might be associated with. For this journey, we will segment contacts based on if they have confirmed a specific sign-up form set up in your CRM. And you'll identify the specific sign-up form that you are referring to. Along the bottom right is where you'll save or delete the specific object. To activate this object, simply click on the first arrow of the previous object and use the dotted drag line to connect it to your new object. Decisions work through a true or false segmentation. For example, if the client's decision is true, you can have a specific action happen. An action allows you to trigger something for the contact. For example, you can send them an email, activate a workflow, or add or remove them from specific groups in your account. Here, we'll send the contact a specific email. You'll first identify the email which is stored within your media library and you'll see a preview of this email here. Along the right, you can also set up read or click automation, which triggers a workflow created within your account if the contact read or clicks this email. With the previous decision being a true or false segmentation, if the contact has false, you can lead them down a different custom path with actions and decisions. For this example, we'll simply stop the contact on the journey to focus on those who have confirmed our ebook download signup form. Once the contact has received your email, the next step we suggest is adding a delay, which gives that contact time to actually read and engage with your content. Delays have a wide variety of customizations. For example, you can do a simple delay, you can wait until a date time, wait until the contact's birthday, or a user-defined field date that is set up. You can set up delays based on your opportunity phases, on document signs, specific link clicks, or you can wait until your contact has read or clicked on your previous email, or set a delay for local day of the week or time for your contact. Once you've identified the amount of hours associated with this delay, you can either do regular hours or business hours, which is the standard nine hours in a day from Monday through Friday. Once that delay time has passed, you can add a decision point to further customize the client experience based on their engagement. For example, this decision criteria can see if a contact read or clicked on your previous email. You can also get granular to see if this contact clicked on a specific link in the email that you sent them. You'll define the specific link here and remove any HTTPS reference. If the contact clicked on your specific link, 
you can have an action trigger. This action can be a follow-up workflow for your team to reach out to the contact. And you can end this contact on the journey. Continue building out this journey to identify the different paths that your contacts can go through. When you're ready to save this journey, click on the Save option along the top right. Here, you can save it as a new journey or create a duplicate, or save it over a previous journey created within your account. You can organize this journey into a specific folder, then give your journey a descriptive name for reference. Next, you can either export this journey or save it into your CRM. Now we'll discuss how to start contacts on your journey that you've just created. The first way to trigger a journey is manually. In the journey screen, make sure that you have loaded and saved your specific journey. Then along the top right, you can click on the button to start a contact on this journey. Here, you'll identify the contact within your CRM and start them on your journey. To start a group of contacts on your journey, make sure that you are in the correct group, then click the button to start group on journey. This option will start all the contacts in your current group on the journey that you have created. The next way to trigger a journey is through using workflows. To set this up, hover over the automation dropdown and select Workflow Manager. Workflows are a great way to trigger journeys as you can activate them throughout the account. Start by creating a new workflow. Give your workflow a descriptive name and save the workflow. Within the Trigger Actions tab, all the journey options are along the bottom. Here you can start a contact on your specific journey, as well as set up the parameters for allowing this journey to restart. For example, you can have no restart on the journey, only start the journey for contacts who have completed the journey previously, or allow this workflow to force the journey to restart when it is activated. Other options you can do within the workflow is to pause a specific journey, resume a contact on a journey, or stop another journey the contact might be on. To learn different ways to trigger this workflow throughout your account, review the workflow triggers videos and help articles. Another way to trigger contacts on a journey is through your signup forms. To do this, hover over the website dropdown and select signup forms. Click on the Edit button associated with your specific signup form and go into the Options tab. Within the Options area, scroll down to the Upon Confirmation. Here, you can select a journey to start once the contact has confirmed their intent through the form. Once you have selected your journey, you can allow restarts for this journey for contacts coming through your form.